Okay, uh, this is part three of the calculator tutorial. Um, for this part, we're going to be looking at how to convert the BCD digits that we type in into two separate 8-bit binary numbers that we can use to actually do math with the numbers that we type in. So we're going to use a device over here that I made a schematic for. Um, typically when I do schematics, the blue is the input, red is the output, and orange is just a device or something. In this case, it's a binary adder. So the adder has two inputs. It's going to add two binary numbers together and give an output. And so this is how it's going to work. Our input is going to go into the right input over here. And this is BCD input from the keypad. So when we type it in, let's say you type in 1, 2, 3. Well, this input is going to get uh, the 1 on the first round, the 2 on the second round, and then the 3 on the third round. Now over here, this other input is routed to the output. So the output gets routed back and on the way back it gets multiplied by 10. So I'll show you how this works. So when we first type in the number 123, we type in a 1. And at this point there's nothing in this uh, input. So 0 plus 1 gives us a 1 in the output. And if we stop if we stop typing at this point and we just want to use a 1, we're fine. However, if we keep going and we press a 2, then what's going to happen is this 1 is going to get routed back, multiplied by 10. So now it's a 10 and it gets added to the 2. So 10 plus 2 gives us a 12. Again, if we want to stop typing, we're fine, but we're typing in 123. So as soon as we press that 3, 12 comes around here, gets multiplied by 10. Now the adder is adding 120 to 3, and we get an output of 123. So I'm going to show you a little bit more about um, binary addition. So it uses logic gates, just like real life, uh, real life circuits. And this, I have a few examples of logic gates out. These are the three uh, logic gates that you need to make an adder. Um, this first one's an AND gate. This is just a really um, simplified version of it. You have two inputs. The output only goes on if both inputs are on. And you have a XOR gate, which works by only letting one through at a time. So if you have one on, it goes through. But if you have both, nothing gets through. And this is just an OR gate. It's literally just redstone wired up and it's always goes on as long as one of them is on. So um, <clears throat> the circuit we need to make a binary adder is called a full adder and uh, I'll put this on screen now. This is used in like tons of electronics. Uh, I made a version of it out of these logic gates drawn out here. So uh, this green and blue is our two inputs and this one here is our carry in. Uh, carry in can just be thought of as another input right now and this is our output and this is our carry out so let's play with it for a second so if you have 1 plus 0 this circuit is going to give us a 1 as an output and same thing if we have it over here also gives us a 1 now if we have 1 plus 1 it's going to give us a 2 which is the carry out bit so this can be thought of as 2 right now if we add 1 plus 1 plus 1, we get a 3, which is a 1 and a 2. Now the idea is, if you, this is a great, this is great for just 2-bit addition, but we want, we need it to be bigger because these are, this, these are going to be potentially like 8-bit numbers if I'm typing in 255. So we need to connect uh, multiple full adders together, and the way we do that is we take the carry out from this guy, and we plug it into the carry in of the next guy. So now. You have to think about it a little bit differently. The two greens is going to be input A, and the two purples are input B. So we can now add, uh, we now have a 4-bit adder. We can add any combination. So we can do 3 plus 3. We can do 2 plus 3, things like that. So let's look at the green. Let's do, let's start with 3 plus 3. So for green, we'll put in a 3 because green, both, both of the green bits are lit up. And for purple, we'll also put in a three. And so our output should be six. And here it is a six. We have a four, which is the carry out of the second full adder. And we have a two. So one, one, zero is a six. And we still have a carry in bit, but that's okay because if we add it, it just fills in the last lamp and we have a perfect seven, one, one, one. So obviously this design is not the smallest or the most compact. There's been a lot of adders in the Minecraft community over the years. My favorite one is the carry cancel adder, which is only four ticks for 
any operation you do on it, it's always the same speed. It's vertical, and that's because it's using some really cool tricks with like slabs and the properties with it. But it does the same thing. It's just a full adder. It's just a very optimized Minecraft adder. And I'll put a link for it in the description. Um, credit goes to the Magic Gentleman, and I'll put a tutorial for it in there too. Someone already made one. Um, but I'm just going to show how it works anyways. Uh, so we have the output is vertical, and it's in red here, 1, 2, 4, etc. as it goes up. The two inputs are also vertical. I, I label them with the blue and the orange. So for example, we can do 5 plus 3, and it gives us an 8. So like I said, really fast, synchronous, which is important. And so we're going to use that carry cancel adder in making our design for this uh, BCD to binary device that I talked about. So what I've done is I, I've taken it out here, I took off all the labels, and I made it so that the output is able to get locked. So right now all the outputs have a, a repeater with them here, and they're all being locked by a slab tower. And so now we need to route them. We need to route the output so that it gets multiplied by 10 uh, on the first input. So the way I'm going to do that is instead of building a whole multiplier, there's a really easy way to do it by just shifting. If you shift a number up once, it gets multiplied by 2. That's just a property of binary. And if you shift a number up 3 times, it gets multiplied by 8, which is another property of binary. So we're going to do that. We're going to take the output, shift it up once, and shift it up 3 times, and add those two numbers together. So just to show you what I mean, here's the number 1. If we want to multiply this by 10, I'm going to first shift it up by 1, which gives us 2. And I'm also going to shift it up by 3 times, which gives us 8. So you see the 1 just went from being in the first slot to being in the second slot, and then to being in the fourth slot. And then, of course, add the, the, add the single shift with the triple shift, and we get 10. So this works with any number. Um, so now we just have to replicate that in this device. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go down to the fourth um, bit here, so one, two, three, four. I'm going to make a block like this, and then what you want to do is you want to start building like this, which is kind of weird, but you'll see why. And I'm going to make a uh, repeater here, and then continue to build up like this. this put another repeater here redstone all along these and so now let's double check our work so we want it to go up by one and up by three so this is the one two three four fifth bit that we're talking about so the fifth bit needs to be shifted into the sixth and the eighth because the sixth is one higher and the eighth is three higher so we know the 8th is going to be the top one, so that's good. And is this the 6th? 8th, 7th, 6th? Yep, we're good. And another thing you can do is you can keep these lamps on here, because um, it'll just act like a solid block, and it'll be a good indicator for... It'll, be ma it'll make it way easier for you to see what's in the output at any time. In fact, I always recommend using lamps if you're debugging stuff. It makes it way easier. So the reason why we built it in this weird way is because this is going to be stackable for um, for any of the ones under it. So we need to stack this one, two, three, four times under. But we can't use the stack command because it will get uh, all messed up. So what I like to do is just build a tower like this. Slash slash copy. Uh, paste dash A which means without air. And is it doing it right? Well, it's almost doing it right. We can rebuild those. Uh, I don't know why this got messed up, but it's not too hard to, to redo. Like this, and like this. And we need one more of them right here. Paste dash A. Like this redstone on these and then we need to do the same thing with this part so copy this module go like this copy paste paste 
paste and paste okay so now we need to make the BCD input possible and what I've done is I've brought this out uh, I think this block is like if you take this reference point right here one two three four five six seven eight and then that goes there I'm gonna label these as well they're gonna be kind of in reverse here I'm gonna make this one the eight four two and one and then I also want all of them to power a line under similar to the signal bit but this will just make it easier for us when we're typing it in like this for the one bit I'm just gonna go like this bring it out to here put a repeater here and redstone for the two bit I'm gonna put a block like this get rid of this redstone here block like this bring it down until it lines up with the thing here out like this and then like this and then I'm also gonna make this like this and so we have our signal bit line right next to everything else for the 4 bit I'm gonna do it a little bit weird so 1 2 4 we need to take it from right here I'm gonna put a repeater here go out one two three four blocks and just bring it down until it lines up with the line here and block this off now for the eight we have a little bit of an issue because both of the eight inputs are being taken right now let's see one two four Four, eight yeah so on this level the right is being taken and the left is being taken so what we need to do is bring it like this and I'll kind of explain what's happening in just a second bring it like this slab slab a block out like this slab uh, slab and slab we can make this a normal block so what's going on here is because we didn't have an 8 we can make use of the carry-in to still input enough to make it add up to 8 so this 8 is now connected to a one a carry-in which is acts like a one so we have one plus one is two so far it's also connected to the two that we did earlier which will add two to it so one plus one plus two is four and then it's also connected to the four that we did earlier so it's it's essentially putting in a one a one a two and a four all at once which is the exact same thing as an eight small correction also put a block right here at this point, it's just a matter of getting the timing right. Um, first thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to make this a little bit faster. Instead of having repeaters come out here, I'm going to make these blocks instead. Okay, and now what we need to do is have a way to depower this in an easy way. And then bring this out. Grab a sticky piston. And in fact, if we have enough signal strength, we can just do it like this okay one two three four we have plenty of signal strength so then you want to build this into this like this two ticks sticky piston block and another repeater for two ticks so now if we've done everything right we should have a finished device besides the clear button so let's test this out if we add in a one the machine saves the one and you can see the next time it gets br it gets uh, brought in it gets shifted up once into the two and three times into the eight and if you look at this and put lamps next to it we can actually see we can predict what's going to happen next time so look at that the next time it's going to send in a 10 1010 one, zero, one, zero. 
and it's going to add it to what's ever in it, which is currently a 1. So let's type in another 1, and at this point, we should have 11, which, it, which, which we do. We have an 8, a 4, and I'm sorry, 8, a 2, and a 1, and that is 11. So now for the final thing, if we wanted 111, we would press 1 one more time, and let's see if this is 111. So this is 64 plus 32, which is 96, and 96 plus 8 is 104, 104 plus 4, 108, 110, 111. Beautiful. So the other thing I want to show you is this makes it really easy for me to show you why you can't type in a number bigger than 255. Because if this is only 8 bits tall, let's look what happens when we type in 255. So we type in a 2. And then to do a 5, I'll have to just uh, do a makeshift uh, 4 and 1 real quick. So 5. And that gives us 25. And then 255. All the lamps are on. And that's the max amount of information it can carry. So that's why 255 is the max. So the last thing we need to do with this guy is make a clear function for it. Um, you might think that you can just clear it by depowering this and letting it all flow out. Which honestly you can. But it can get really slow sometimes. So for example, if you just plug in a 1. And then you depower it. Yeah, I don't want to wait that long. So, let's make this a little bit faster. What I'm going to do for that is I'm going to move this torch out to here. Um, move this guy like this. And also like this. Get rid of this torch. We don't need it anymore. Uh, reroute this so that it still connects. And then you're going to want to put sticky pistons Um lining up so that they look like they're about to grab the um, the lamps. So I think you need like five of them. You only need to do the ones that are um, connected to the redstone. You don't need to go above that. Let's go like this. And then you want to connect them all with a slab tower. So like this. Whoops. Redstone. And then make them powered like this. So if they're just being powered right now, it doesn't do anything because they're extended and they won't affect the lamp. But as soon as we hit the clear button, which I'll just put over here, this is going to depower it and it's going to depower the pistons, which will retract the lamps. And instead of letting it flow through, it will just flow out and die. It won't have a chance to go back around any anymore. Um, so let's make this like this. Bring this down. Actually, just make this all flat. There we go. It makes it easier. And then we can just bring it up one here. And then you're going to want a redstone there. So let's test this out. Here's our clear button. If we type in one. And let's type in more. Let's type in uh, a two. So now this is going to be 12. So now we'll watch it and we'll see if it still takes time to flow out. And it doesn't. They just kind of disappear. So same thing if we just have a one. Remember last time it just took a long time now it just disappears so it's a lot faster and it, it didn't take that much effort so there you go so we're going to need two of these guys one to resemble the top number and one to resemble the bottom number uh, but before we do that and copy them over here what I'm going to do is just for layout purposes you're going to want to take these digits and make them go to the side because we're going to we're going to paste it right here um, so this is a was this the 8 bit? Yeah, I think this was the 8. So remember the 8 was on the right. So 
let's have this one on the right. And we're going to need to have it go over all this stuff, which is kind of annoying, but just bring it up like this, all the way like this. Bring it back. And then the four will go next to it. Like this. The two. And the one, which we're going to need to do some fancy wiring for. Oh wait, no we're not. I'm just not building it in the right spot. Just bring it up like this. Nope, still need fancy wiring. Whoops. And that's why slabs are useful. Okay. Build these all with redstone. And then you're going to want to test to make sure that they all reach it and put repeaters where you need to. And then as long as this has enough space, we should be able to directly copy those four repeaters right here. Before I copy it, you're actually going to want to split this line into two. So take this and do this for all the UCD digits. And then just expand these out. Like this. Copy this. Stack three. Okay, now we're ready to copy and paste. So let's take this, bring this out, take the first corner, boom, take the second corner. Boom. Pick a reference point. I'm just going to pick right here. Copy. And we do need to rotate it by 270. Obviously, it might be different for you. And paste. Dash A, because why not? And there we go. So we should be able to type in numbers, and we should be able to have it resembled in binary right here, as well as the display at this point. So let's try that. Let's try fan favorite 123. One, two, three. 123 on the display, which perfectly matches with the 123 in the machine. Beautiful. Now we do need another one of these for the B number. So this is why I brought these down here, because what we're gonna do is we're gonna take these and just make them go under the entire machine. So just literally take this, stack it like 20 or so, oh, we need even more, 30, um, and then bring it back up to the same level that, um, that these guys are on. So up to, uh, up to 108. So bring these up. So you get to 108, beautiful. Uh, but you can do it quicker than that. You can do it like right here. Four. Beautiful. Take this. Go like this. You know the drill. Expand one. Stack three. And then, of course, we need to think about signal strength here. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Boom, 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 boom. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. And as soon as we paste the next one, we should be good. And I think I still have it in my clipboard. Yep, I do. So now that we have machines for both A and B, the last thing we need to do is the logic for the lever and the button. So the clear button is the easiest. It's just going to clear both A and B. So that's this outside line here, and we just need to route it with the clear lines for both of our machines. So make it branch off here, get on the same level, and I'm going to test the signal strength. 
So I'm going to do it like this, like this. Bring it up, make it connect, and repeater. And then, I don't know if I showed this earlier, but you also need a repeater right here. Otherwise, you'll have some issues. Bring this all the way out and connect with the other clear line. And just make sure it has enough strength. So, get rid of this torch. And now when we press clear, it should clear both of our machines. Now for the lever, that's going to be this line right here. So we need this to cancel A when it's on B and cancel B when it's on A. So I've already put in some comparators. You need them on subtract mode just like before. Uh, you might not have enough room down here. Uh, I think what I did is I moved these back by a few blocks just so I had enough room to bring out the, uh, the cancel part under here. And so I'll build that right now. This is the cancellation for, for A. So you need repeaters like this. Repeaters on these blocks. You need to block these out, just like before. And then line them up with, uh, with a line like this. And just bring it out for now. Do the exact same thing on B. Bring these down. Block them out. Do a line. And now we just need to make this line uh, do what it's supposed to do. So when it's on A, and it is on A right now. So when it's on A, it needs to cancel B. So right now, it should be canceling B, which it will do if you just connect these wires. And make sure you have enough signal strength. Okay, and we wanna do the opposite thing to A, and we can achieve that with a torch. This torch will be the opposite and it will do the vice versa. So now, when we, when we are on A, a is being let through, B is being canceled, and vice versa. We do this, bring it down to B, A is being canceled, and B is being let through. Okay, I lied. There's one more thing we have to do. These machines have no idea if we type in zero right now, so the zero has to connect to the same line that everybody else does. Remember this signal bit that kind of gets activated when anyone gets activated? The zero has to do that too. So the easiest way to get the signal from the zero is right here off of this torch. So take it like this, bring it up, and I'm going to make it line up with that right there. So let's start bringing it up right away. And then just for signal strength purposes, again, get rid of this. Bring it all the way up. And it also has to be canceled according to this logic as well. So we're going to have to expand this by one. Bring this like this. So just copy all of these parts and do the exact same thing over here. And so now this has to be our zero. And what I'm going to do for that is continue to try to connect it to this guy might get a little messy here but I should be able to just bring it up with a slab tower barely doesn't intersect and put it like this okay that should work let's just double check so fill in the redstone repeater there this up <laughs> I messed that up too <laughs> and there you go that looks good so this also has to power the uh, the other one the zero all the way over here which is on this line So again, just copy all of these parts.
and you might have to look at the signal strength to make sure it reaches all the way. Boom, repeater, redstone. Repeater. Bring this up just like the rest of them. And it's gonna connect to this guy. Whoops, needed one higher. There we go. Okay, let's turn the zero back off. Uh, double check this real quick. Okay, and uh, yeah, turn the zero back off because we were just testing it for the signal strength. Also get rid of this part. And that should be good. So now it's time to give it a final test. Right now we should have two machines that accurately resemble what's on the display in an 8-bit number. For the top, I'll type in 200 and 7. For the bottom, I'll just type in um, 90, 8. And let's check it out. So 207. 1100111. Zero, zero, one, 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 one. That is accurate. That's 207. Over here, this should be 98. Let's see. A 64 plus a 32. That gives us a 96. Plus another two, 98. Beautiful. Thanks for watching.